Praise the Lord. That was a, such a good children's lesson. I know that I still need to learn that as a child of God, how to have that rest and sing that song in the trials. Today, I am very excited to be able to share with you our topic. And I'll just give you a little reason why I'm sharing this. I grew up in a very good Christian home, and I was so blessed with godly parents who really instructed me. And I also remember going to camp meetings where we talked about family values and just growing up in a in a culture of the value of families. And I'm grateful to be able to share with you some of the things that I've learned along the journey. Today we're going to be talking about God's purpose in families. And this is an incredible um, topic that I am so excited to share with you today. Our first text, we're going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 11, 21. And this is, um, for time's sake, we have cut out some of the rest, but I would encourage you to read the verses previous to this so that you can get the context. But this really shows us in the family what can happen. It says that your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children. So this is the family in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. You see, in the family, God wants to give an illustration to the world of what heaven is like. He wants to be able to show through the, through the husband and the wife, through the children, through the young adults, what heaven is like. In Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18, it says, Behold, I, this is Isaiah talking, it says, Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. The children, the family unit is to be for signs and for wonders in the world. Our next verse is very clear. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2. And it says, Ye are epistles written in our hearts, known and read of all men. The family. The family circle is to be a miniature symbol of the family above. Our Heavenly Father, and we are His children. We are here on earth as fathers, mothers, and children to represent our great God and his children up in heaven. A living illustration is what we are to be of the government of God on this earth. Where Satan claims his dominion, where Satan claims that this is his sphere and he is ruling and seeking to cause havoc and destruction, God's families are to be an illustration of what God's government really looks like. One well-ordered, well-disciplined family actually tells more in behalf of Christianity than all the sermons that can be preached. We are epistles read and known of all men. People are looking at families. People are looking at couples. People are looking at children to understand what is heaven going to be like, especially as we claim to be Christians. This is so beautiful in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. It says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. Why? What, did, what was the purpose of this child's existence? It says, And I ordained thee to be a prophet unto the nations. You see, God has a purpose for the little people, he has a purpose for them as they're growing up. He has a purpose for them in their family. And he has a purpose for them as they become mature women and men of God. And his purpose is so that they may be a blessing to the nations. That they may be able to share Christ and the government and the truth and the beauty of Christ with all around. In Psalms 8 verse 2, it tells us that out of the mouth of babes and sucklings that God has ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. So even the little people, we may think, what can they do? What, what benefit can they have? But it says that even they, little as they might be, they can be a representation of God and his government, and they can actually still or quiet the enemies that come around. Truly, when um, I have seen it happen many times that 
um, as our family would go into a new area and my father would begin preaching and sharing the truth as he was so passionate about doing. And he would begin to seek to open up the truth before the people. They would begin to question. And there's always the enemies of truth that are there. They would begin to really um, cause some issues and some troubles. But as they saw us children, as they saw how my father treated us children and how he treated his wife, as they saw how his wife acted and how us as his children, all different ages, and um, acted and believed the truth and how we were seeking to live the truth, those enemies were quieted. God has an incredible purpose for families. In Genesis chapter 26, verse 4 and 5, it simply tells us, this is a promise that God was making to Abraham. And it tells us here, And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice, and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. In another place it says of Abraham, I knew that he would command his household after him, and that is why I could bless him. And in and through this family environment, it tells us that all nations of the earth were to be blessed. And we recognize that that was ultimately through Christ, but the family was to be what preserved that. Christ coming into the world was to be through a family. The family was to be a little illustration of God's great principles of truth, of what his commandments, his statutes, and his laws really taught and how they could be lived. In Gen this is not Genesis. This is actually Isaiah. There is a little typo here, but in Isaiah chapter 26, verse, this is not even verse 4 and 5. I'm not sure what verse this is. We're going to have to look this up, but maybe you can look it up. We just learned today about the electronic Bibles. If you can look it up on your phone or on something else, these words are true. The reference just isn't. So it says, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Amen. Now, how is God going to make a man more precious than fine gold, even the golden wedge of Ophir? You see, as we represent Christ in this world, as we share through our life and our existence, what the character of Christ looks like. We are more precious to God than fine gold. And as a family unit, as we reflect the character of God, there's these precious words that I once read. It said, a well-ordered, well-disciplined family in the sight of God is more precious than fine gold, even than the golden wedge of Ophir. So a family unit is more precious to God as they are seeking to follow and obey the principles that heaven has sent forth. They are more precious than gold. A lot of people feel that they need gold in this world. How many of us are realizing that our families, whether we're a, a teenager living with our parents, whether we're little children, or whether we're parents living um, and seeking to be a blessing, our families are more valuable than gold or so silver. And we need to have this in our minds so that as we are going about, we would place the true value and estimate upon our families and upon the work. And we'll be talking later about that. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 and 16, it gives us a very beautiful illustration of what our family could be through Christ and what God has desired it to be. It says, ye are the light of the world. If we are truly representing Christ's government and Christ's character and Christ's teachings in this world, then we are the light of the world. We are helping the world that is in darkness from Satan's government see the light of truth because they can see it worked out in a father, in a wife, in a husband, in little children, they can see in all those stages, in all those different dynamics, they can see this is what Christianity is like. This is what it means to be a Christian. I can see it now. So many people are looking for that visible illustration. They can read about it in books, but until they see it with their eyes, it's not going to have that same impact on them. It goes on to say, a city 
that is set on a hill cannot be hid. If your family is set in this world and is seeking to be the light that Christ has to let your light shine, you will not be able to be hid. And it says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Next slide. A lamp, however small, if kept steadily burning, may be the means of lighting other lamps. Amen. Our sphere of influence may be, seem narrow, our abilities small, our opportunities few, our acquaintances limited, yet wonderful possibilities are ours through a faithful use of the opportunities of our own homes. Can you imagine that your home is like a light? And I would encourage you there, I have this illustration to share with you today. Look at this city. This city is a lit up city. And we just read earlier that it said that, um, that a city set on a hill cannot be hid. Now, I have a question. Because this city is all lit up, this city, you can see it at night. Um, I live in the country, but as we're driving at night towards our little hometown, we can see a great glow on the horizon, even though it's nighttime. And sometimes I know that people, as we're driving them towards the city, well, the little town, it's not very big, but as we're driving them there and they're asking, what is that? Is that like the moon or, or something else? What in the world is over there? We're like, no, that's a, that's a city. You can't hide a city. Well, some people have tried to hide a city. And I realize that today in this world, do you see family shining like this in the darkness of this world? Or are you seeing more like what happened in World War II? Now, in World War II, there was these bomber planes. And these bomber planes wanted to destroy the city. Can you go back to the next slide really fast? And can you imagine if you're a bomber plane and you see these lights in this city, you're going to know exactly what your target is. You're going to know exactly where you're wanting to bomb. And as these bomber planes were coming, the, the people started understanding, if we leave our lights on, those bomber planes will bomb us. And so they began to have regulations about shutting all the lights out. We can see in this picture, this little girl, she's only about seven years old, and she is already pulling those curtains closed. And there's cloth behind that, that's so that no light will escape the household at night. Nobody will be able to see the light of their house so it will be bombed. This next picture is of a car and over the, the tail light or the headlight, I'm not sure exactly what this is in this picture, they would have these blackened out discs that you would put over there so that only a slit of light, a little tiny sliver of either red or yellow light would be able to be seen. There's actually reports as I was research, researching some of this that there was terrible accidents at night in World War II because they, the drivers simply could not see where they were going and they could not see the other cars on the road. So it caused a lot of disaster. But as we're looking at this, this is why there is not so many families. Satan is seeking to put a no lights ban on each of our homes. He is wanting us to really have no light shining out. He wants us to think that in this war that um, he will win if there is light. But my brothers and sisters, the Bible is clear that Christ is the light of the world. And as we are standing up in this world to be that light, to let your household shine, there is great encouragement. Our houses are to be like this house here, letting the light of Christ shine forth in the darkness of this world's night. Now this next text is a great encouragement. As we are seeking to let our light shine, it simply tells us, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? As we are letting our light shine in the darkness, it is telling us here that we should not be afraid of anyone or anything. When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, come up upon me to eat my flesh, they stumble and fall. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. 
For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Now my brothers and sisters, God has a purpose for your family. He has a purpose for you. And it doesn't matter how old or young you are. Even if you're a single person, God has a purpose for you to share the light of truth, to be that living illustration. If you're a young person living in your parents' home, you have the ability of showing Christ in that home and transforming that home into the light that it should be. Amen. If you're a little child and you're hearing this and your parents might not be watching, you still have the blessed privilege of being that light in your home so that your parents can be lighted too. Because a lamp will light other lamps. And no matter your age, or who you are, you can be that little light that lights other lights. And I would encourage each one of us to let our light shine. We have nothing to fear as long as we are not allowing Satan to put out our lights like in World War II.